Hello, Dr. Gentry. This is Dean from Cleveland, Ohio. What is the mark of the beast? Isn't it at all remarkable to you that for the first time in human history, with the computer chips, the retinal scanners, and the growing one world economy, that the technology exists to make the mark of the beast a reality? That's remarkable, but irrelevant. Because remember, the mark of the beast has reference to the beast, which we've already shown to be Nero. The book of Revelation is dealing with short-term events, not long-term events. So my first response to that kind of technology is that it's, it's remarkable, fascinating, but totally irrelevant to the book of Revelation. The Christians in the seven churches dying at the hands of the Caesars are not interested in micro-technology, microwaves, or anything else. They're interesting, interested in what is the Lord doing? Why are we suffering? And John is also suffering. He's on the Isle of Patmos suffering with them. And so he gives them words of comfort through this vision that Christ has given him. Now, the mark of the beast, we have to still deal with it because it's in the book of Revelation, chapter 13, uh, about verses 15 through 18. The number 666 is the mark, and it's in verse 18. I don't believe the mark of the beast is any more literal than the mark that's on the people of God. It's interesting, the very next verse after you read 666 as the mark of the beast is in chapter 14 of Revelation. We read these words, And I looked, and behold, the Lamb was standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his name and the name of his Father written on their foreheads. Now here, we need to ask the question, do we think that the people of God, the 144,000, literally have a mark on their foreheads that have the name of God or something? Obviously, this is some kind of image. And I don't believe that the mark that the beast imposes is any different than the mark that God imposes in, in that it's not a literal circumstance, but it's something of a spiritual connotation. I believe, as a matter of fact, that marking someone on their head and on their hand is a metaphor for dominion and control. After all, it says if you don't have the mark of the beast, you can't buy or sell. The idea of a mark on your head is uh, the attempt to control your thoughts. The mark on your hand is an attempt to control what you do. When we look in the scriptures, for instance, in Deuteronomy 6, verse 8, God says He wants His law on your head and on your hands. He wants to control what you think. He wants to control what you do. Well, in the book of Revelation, as we've indicated earlier, Nero has divine pretensions. He wants to be God. He thinks he's Apollo, the sun god. And he imposes his will upon the people and tries to act as a god so that if you do not bow to Caesar, if you don't listen to his edicts and do what he finds pleasing, then you would be subject to uh, death or subject to expulsion from the land, uh, imprisonment, and things of that sort. So that Nero, as the beast, is imposing his will, his dominion, and attempting to be as God, controlling the minds of men and the activities of men. And so the image of the mark on the head and the mark on the hand is simply a metaphor for attempted control of men's lives. Any present day mark or image is totally contrary to the book of Revelation, which has a time frame that says this is shortly to come to pass, the time is at hand. It has no relevance to the people who receive the book, the seven churches, it has no relevance to them. And it also has no relevance to the theme in chapter 1, verse 7, which deals with God's judgment coming against those who pierced Christ, the twelve tribes of Israel of the first century.